Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go hands-on with the Windows Recall feature on Windows 11 version 24H2. I am currently using a virtual machine with a ARM64 installation of Windows 11 using the latest update, which is version 24H2, but without an MPU, only 8GB of RAM and 128 gigs of SSD. And I am also using a remote desktop connection to the virtual machine, so any lag you see on this video is because of the remote connection. Okay, let's dive into this first look at the Recall AI feature for Windows 11. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. Okay, so I assume that most people by now know what Windows Recall is, but just to give you a short description, Windows Recall is a timeline feature that helps you find anything you have done on your computer. It's like search, but it works more like a photographic memory. The feature works by taking screenshots of everything you do on the computer and using different AI models running locally on the device to analyze and understand the content and the context of what the feature sees on the screen, such as images and text. The feature uses different AI models, which are part of the new Windows Copilot runtime, and some of them include the Screen Region Detector, Optical Character Recognizer, Natural Language Parser, and the Image Encoder. In fact, now that we have these AI components, the Settings app, if we go to System, now we're going to see that we have a new AI Components page that will include all the AI components installed on the computer. Also, the data collected is stored locally on the computer in the new Windows Semantic Index, which makes it easier for data retrieval. This index is different from the Windows Search Index that we typically use for finding files. First, let's get one thing out of the way. Recall comes disabled by default on Windows 11 version 24H2. If your computer meets the requirements, you might see a screen like this with the option to open the settings app to enable the feature manually. Once you check that and click the continue button, the feature will actually not turn on. It will only open the settings app on the page where you can turn on the feature. And that page is available from privacy and security. And it's this one right here, recall and snapshots. In here, you can turn on and off the feature with this toggle switch. I will come back to this page later, but first I want to show you the experience. So once you enable the feature, you will have access to the Recall app. And this is how the interface looks. And this interface has a few elements. We have a search box that you can use to find anything using natural language because it is powered by AI. You can also use the timeline slider to scroll back in time. And if you click this button, it will reset the timeline and it will show the most up-to-date snapshot from the feature. It is important to know that Recall takes a screenshot or a snapshot of anything that you're doing on the computer around every five seconds after the last screenshot. Everything gets saved on the computer locally and nothing gets uploaded to the cloud. That's according to Microsoft. So that means that you can use this feature even without an internet connection. Now, if you click the, let's open up Notepad. If you click the Now button, it will take a screenshot of what's currently on the screen. However, this particular snapshot is not going to be saved into the computer. It will temporarily be saved, but it will not be committed to the actual history of the feature. So whenever you need anything, like I said before, you can use the slider or you can use search. Let's say yesterday I was activating this installation of Windows. So we can just look for activation. And as you can see, we have some screenshots from that time that I was activating Windows. So we can select any of these snapshots and we can click right here and you can delete or copy the snapshot. You can also give the snapshot a thumb up or down to help train the AI locally on the computer. You can also sort the results. Here we can see that we're seeing all the results, but we can narrow it down. And then we can just select the snapshot. And one thing that I wanted to point out is that in addition to buy things that you have done in the past, remember that this is more like a photographic memory and no 
an actual search. So recall only can find things that you've done. So if you haven't opened a file for a long time, the feature will not be able to find it. So if that's the case, you can also click the File Explorer results and that will open File Explorer and it will do a search for that specific file. So now when you select a snapshot, now when you see this action right here, now we're looking at at the screen rate feature, which technically is similar to the feature that allows you to copy text using the snipping tool. So let's look for snipping tool. And then if we take a screenshot and then we click the text actions button that we're going to see an experience similar to the screen rate for the Windows Recall feature. And now we can select and copy text or create that text in this particular application. So this reminds me a lot of what's going on right here. Now let's look at the different tools that we can use with this application. So you can select text and open that selection with other applications such as Notepad or Visual Studio Code. Also at the bottom, we can see some buttons that in this case allows us to open the settings app, but it appears that it's not working correctly. We can hide the screen rate, and now we can see this as just a screenshot. We can copy the screenshot to the clipboard and then paste it in a different location. We can delete the snapshot, and we have the option to open this with a snipping tool. And here you have the time and date on when the snapshot was actually taken. We can actually move between each of the different snapshots using these controls. It is important to know that the options that appear right at the bottom will also depend on the application and the content. And another thing to point out is even though you can use the screen rate to analyze the snapshot, the feature can only analyze what it sees. So here we have the address bar with the website that we were in. However, if we click this, we're not going to find the page because the URL is not complete. However, it appears that Recall actually talks to the Microsoft Edge browser in this case. And if we click right here, we actually are going to that specific link. And here's the full path. And from here, we can also interact with different elements for that specific snapshot. As I showed you before, you can copy text, but now we also get in the option to copy the image from this particular snapshot. Also, Recall is available through the system tray by clicking this icon. And from here, you can see the last screenshot that was taken. You can also open the app and you can pause the feature if you wanted to do stuff that you don't want the application to record. So you can pause that. And as a description of the option, you can only pause until the next day. And you can also resume that at any time. Now you can access the recall settings on the settings app by clicking this, or you can also open the settings page by opening this menu and clicking the settings option. Inside, we got a bunch of settings that you can configure, for example, and one of the most important ones is this one right here, which is save snapshots. And this one allows you to enable and disable the feature on your computer. In addition to enable and disable the feature, you can also access the storage settings. By default, the Windows Recall feature sets a minimum of 25 gigabytes of storage. However, this is going to depend on the computer that you have. For example, on a 256 gigabyte hard drive, we're going to see an allocation of 25 gigs. If you have a 512 gigabyte SSD, the allocation will be 75 gigabytes. And if you have one terabyte SSD, the allocation will be 150 gigabytes. You can always open this setting and you can use this menu to choose the allocation that you want to use for your computer. Just to give you an idea, 25 gigabytes is going to give you roughly three months of recall snapshots. Whatever allocation you set 
once the limit is reached, similar to the recycle bin, the system is going to start deleting older snapshots to make room for new ones. So let's say that you're using the default 25 gigs and in four months, you want to scroll back in time to a specific snapshot that is about like four months old. You might not be able to find it because the feature might have deleted it already. So this is one of the biggest difference between search and recall. Search, you can use it at any time and it's always going to find the file. If you're using recall, you can use it for as long as the feature remembers that specific activity. And here you're going to see the total storage usage, but you can also click this setting and this one will take you to the system storage settings where you can also see more details about, about the snapshots storage. At any time, you can use the delete snapshots setting to delete snapshots from a specific time frame. Using this dropdown gives you the options to delete all the snapshots from the last hour, last day, last seven days, or the last 30 days. Once you select the option, just click this button to delete that data from the computer. If you want to delete everything, just click the delete all button. Now let's talk about filters, but it's, this is also tied to how the feature works. For example, if you're using any Chromium based web browser, such as Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, when you are using the browser in, in private mode or incognito mode, Recall will not take a screenshots from those activities. However, you can also filter out the apps and websites that you don't want the feature to record that activities. So if you want to exclude an app for being part of the recall feature, you can just click the add button, scroll down to select the app and click the add button. If you no longer want to exclude a particular app, you can just click the delete button. Now, if you want to prevent Recall from tracking activities that you do on certain websites, you can use this option. And from here, just click the add website button and then type the URL for the domain that you want to exclude from the feature. For example, let's just add wikipedia.com and then just click the add button. Now, here's the caveat using this feature. This only works if you're using a Chromium based web browser such as Edge or Chrome. So if you're using another browser and you go to this particular website that is excluded, Recall is going to ignore it and it's going to record the activities on that specific website. Now let's talk about the security of Windows Recall because there are a lot of chatter about this topic. And although Microsoft said that Recall is secure, it is not completely true, at least in my opinion. The company has talked about the security that it offers when setting up the computer with Windows Hello, encryption with BitLocker, and the use of the Microsoft Pluton security processor on Copilot Plus PCs and the security standards that it follows. However, all of this is just part of the account security and the security of the device. But the Windows Recall data itself doesn't actually seem to have any security. And let me show you so you can understand what I'm talking about. So if you open File Explorer and then just browse to your account and you have to make sure that you are showing hidden files. And then if we go to the app data folder and then go to the local folder, we're now going to find a new core AI platform that zero zero instead of that folder we're going to find the UKP folder. Inside of that, you're going to find a folder like this, which has a unique hexadecimal number, and it might be different on your computer. But inside of it, here's where all the data for Windows Recall is stored. If you can tell, inside of the image store folder, that's where all the screenshots that Windows Recall has taken is stored on your computer. Yes, all these files are not on JPEG, but we can easily right click on it and just copy. Actually, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to copy this and then I'm just going to do a simple rename and I'm going to add the JPEG file extension and then I'm going to open this. And as you can see, we can see the screenshot that Windows Recall has taken for that particular moment. 
And the same for all this, you can actually rename all these files to JPEG, and then you can access all the screenshot that the feature has taken. Now, if we just click back, we're going to find all these other files, and these are part of the database. And the actual database for Windows Recall is this ukg.dv, and we can make a copy of this. Actually, I was testing this before, so I'm going to delete this. And we can actually copy this file, and then you can use any database application to mount and open the database. In my case, I just found this SQL Lite Studio application, and so I installed it, and then I'm just going to add a database. Like I said, I was testing this before, so the path is already here. And then I'm just going to, but instead of opening the live database, I'm going to go to the place where I actually copy the database. And then we select it, and then we click OK. And now we mounted the database to this application. And then we just double click. And you can see all the tables with all the information that this particular database have. The table that we want to pay attention is the Windows Capture Text Index underscore content. When we open that, we can now go to the data tab. And then in here, we can browse the table. And here is where all the data is stored. And when you scroll down, you're going to find all the information for each snapshot. And everything is on plain text and easy to access. Okay, I'm not gonna go into the details of each piece of information because that's unique for every computer and every user, but you can see that there's a lot of details, including in this case, because I was browsing the settings app, the email account for that demo user was recorded. And I remember also that I was activating Windows and the activation key was actually recorded on the database as well. In Microsoft Defense, you do usually store documents with sensitive information on your computer and you take pictures with sensitive stuff on your phone and then that gets loaded to OneDrive and then download it on your computer if you use a OneDrive service on your computer. So the company may have thought that storing your information in plain text was okay because of the system security, but that's just my opinion. However, I think that the point now is that Recall tracks everything you do and that could create even more sensitive information and we can only imagine that certain people will try to create malware and other type of apps that will scrap this information from your data. Another thing to point out is that if you have device encryption enabled on your computer, the data will be protected. But if you disable the feature, anyone with access to your computer will have access to this information if the other person has an administrator account and have access to your computer. For example, Microsoft had made changes to the installation of Windows 11 to turn on encryption by default, but a lot of people are going to disable that or it might not be enabled on every device. So now, for example, if we go to the privacy and security section on the settings app, we can see that right now I have device encryption turned off and I'm able to use the recall feature without any issues. So at the end, I think it's going to be up to the user to make sure that the computer stays secure by using all the security features. Also, it is important to know that Windows Recall is still in preview and Microsoft might change how everything works in the future. So what do you think about the feature and the security implementations that Microsoft added to Windows 11 version 24H2? Let me know in the comments. That is all there is to it. Remember to like the video. Like I said, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you. And I would like to thank you for viewing.